What's going on Omnibuddies? Mitch here and today we are doing another Omnibuddy overview. What are we looking at today? Well, we are looking at one of the, in my consideration, one of the most horrific stories in the Mignola universe, uh, Mike Mignola's The Crooked Man. All right, so at least as of the making of this video, the first trailer for The Crooked Man has just dropped and in my opinion, it looks really cool. I know a lot of people are having different thoughts on it. Uh, I personally love the idea that they are leaning into the horror of the story and that it is a lower budget uh, movie than previous Hellboy entries into the universe. And so I am really excited to see what they do with this because... Uh, Going back, I, I had I, I read it a long time ago. Going back after seeing the trailer and rereading it, I was reminded how much uh, this story truly was some of the uh, craziest horror in the Mignola universe, and it is creepy as heck. And you know what? Let's find out why. All right, so this is the Crooked Man in the Hellboy universe. So this is volume four of the library editions. Here's what the spine looks like. It's got that nice foil on there. It's got really nice linen coverings on the hard covers, so it's really nice. This is a sticker, it actually peels off. And yeah, so this includes the Crooked Man and the Troll Witch. Uh, it is by, well, The Crooked Man, at least, is by Mike Mignola, written by him, and the art is by Richard Corbin. And yeah, so The Crooked Man is available in multiple formats, uh, the library edition being one. You can also pick it up in a bunch of different trade paperback editions and omnibus editions and all that sort of thing. So this is just the one that I have in my collection. So this is what I'm showing and it happens to have probably the biggest version of the art. So that's kind of nice to show off. So with this, you got a great introduction and I will just be showing off the Crooked Man. Uh, might flip through uh, the rest of the book real quick, just to kind of give you an idea of what you got. Uh, but yeah, so it is colored by Dave Stewart and Laverne. Uh, oof, I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna fail at this name. Kinzerski, Kinzerski, something like that. But yeah, you have a ton of different uh, stories in here. But it does start off with the Crooked Man, uh, which is three issues, and it was a short, limited series. Um, so it is Crooked Man issues one through three uh, in the overall. Uh, Hellboy universe canonically. Uh, the issues were actually numbered 33, 34, and 35. Uh, so, and this uh, was written in, uh, July, they were from July 2008 through September of 2008. So that's kind of what you're looking at now. Um, so yeah, so this isn't the, uh, this is one of the few, one of the stories that doesn't necessarily resemble the traditional Mignola art, which is very much like this. Uh, but much of the, many of the artists that add to the Mignola verse have a very similar style to this. So it does flip around here and there in art styles, but overall the tones really tend to lend themselves very well to the story. So this story, like I said, very short being three issues, takes place in the Appalachian Mountains in Virginia in 1958. And basically Hellboy is wandering uh, throughout the, well, kind of the North American, Central American continent, kind of on a walkabout. And he ends up walking through the Appalachian Mountains and kind of stumbles into a bit of a story where it picks up uh, a lady has been cursed and Hellboy is there helping the locals uh, figure out what happened. And they are, you know, looking at the clues, including finding a uh, witch ball here. And that is kind of the first idea of what's going on, is that she has been cursed by a witch. And another local, uh, Tom, shows up. And he is very much like... A local who hasn't been around for a while. Now, I'm not going to give away too much of the story because 
It is so awesome. I just want you to know that it's basically Hellboy and Tom going on this adventure to solve uh, what's going on in this community with witchcraft and uh, some sort of evil presence. And they find some pretty horrific things. So if you are not into horror, uh, then this is definitely not a not a book for you because uh, it is all about witchcraft and horror and there is you know kind of the the devil and demons and uh, dealing with all kinds of crazy things way up in the mountains and deep in the mines and you get your first glimpse of the crooked man relatively early on and he is absolutely horrific in this like one of the creepiest versions of a character I've I've come across in all the Hellboy books. I've read all of the library editions. I've read a huge, huge portion of all the BPRD stuff and the Baltimore and uh, Witchfinder and all of those stories. Uh, still taking my taking my time finishing through all of it because it is one of those series that you really want to uh, take your time through and really enjoy and not just rush through for the sake of it. Uh, but you find out the motivations a bit, a bit of the motivations of Tom and the community and then the crooked man's motivations and where he came from. And then everything, really all hell begins to break loose. And it is just kind of one of those, though hell breaks loose, it is kind of a slow burn in that uh, there's kind of slow reveals and new characters introduced and weird things begin to happen and it keeps getting weirder and you keep getting deeper into the lore and things just get weird, creepy, and then uh, you're kind of tossed into the whole uh, idea of the devil and uh, you know a church and the God, a man of the cloth kind of a thing. And kind of the kind of a last temptation sort of uh, situation, and there's a lot of kind of going back and forth and interesting dialogue, where um, yeah, you're just really good dialogue. I, I gotta say, Mignola is a master at not just art and plotting out this universe, but he really is a master of dialogue, which is really nice. I mean, a lot of times you'll read a good story and man, that was a really great story, really great art, but you know, the dialogue was clunky or there was major plot holes and you're kind of left wanting with some, some of that type of stuff. Whereas with the Mignola verse and really any book that Mike Mignola writes, uh, you really don't have to worry about clunky dialogue because he is a master at that craft and telling a story and giving, really giving some uh, good one-liners too, especially for Hellboy. I mean, if you've watched or read any Hellboy before, you know that he's just got some really interesting, <laughs> really funny, cool one-liners. I was going to say interesting, but no, just cool, fun one-liners. I mean, he's always dropping the, oh, crap kind of stuff and, you know, get, getting annoyed when things get too... To, to when, when things get annoying and people are talking too much and there's too much exposition. So, very cool story. Uh, I don't really want to give away much of it, so I'm going to put my hand over it so it's not giving away too much. Uh, but uh, that's it. So, I mean, it's, you know, that ends on page 82 and uh, starts on, I don't know, what was it? Uh, let's see, page 11. So, I mean, yeah, you have... Uh, what is that? Uh, 71 pages about of story. And then you get right into P Penangalan and jumping right into, then you see some different art style and all that. Like really, this is more the traditional Mignola, in my opinion, Mignola art style, which a lot of actual, actually he has a lot of artists that guest on here. And if I don't pay attention, a lot of times I assume that it's Mignola, but it's some other artist and... Uh, so a lot of them do a really good job kind of mimicking that style, um, but definitely jumps from different different stories to different things. Uh, 
and yeah, it's very cool stuff. And I gotta say, uh, let's see some of these stories at the end too, man. That's, that's why I gotta say, don't just, you can pick up the trade paperback, but man, there are some really, really great stories in here, um, with, <laughs> as you continue reading and, uh, definitely stuff you don't want to miss out. And it's really quick. I mean, you look at these stories and there's not a lot of dialogue going on. It's a lot of just visual action. And I think, you know, the Crooked Man had a lot more dialogue than the typical uh, Hellboy story. Then you see like, here's some different art styles going on. And man, the, the scale of this book, these library editions are just so awesome to hold and see and it just makes it's it's a great reading experience with these library editions uh, they have thicker formats these are about the largest scale uh, height wise and with the art scale unless you're going to get like an absolute or uh, artist editions uh, which have art even bigger but those are generally you know into the silent sea is one of them that comes to mind uh, where it's just that story but it is in an epic scale and also very expensive and out of print. So yeah, so you got a lot of great afterwards stuff and story notes talking about it. Um, here he's talking about the Crooked Man. Uh, yeah, so Manly Wade Wellman's character, John, who wandered around the Appalachian Mountains playing his guitar and fighting monsters was a major influence on me when I created Hellboy. Uh, so that was, um, is a major influence for Hellboy, but it's also a major influence for the Crooked Man story. So cool stuff in the back, back to talking about it. And then you got this great sketchbook uh, with, you know, the creator notes in there too, talking about processes and you see all the sketches and line art and things like that and kind of how things come uh, to fruition. Really cool stuff. Then you got some great uh, cover art here. Yeah, oh man, so good. So, so, so good and great end sheets. I'm a sucker for end paper art in this, especially in this scale, I'm a sucker for it. Uh, love it. So that is a quick look at volume four of Hellboy with the Crooked Man. All right, so that was a quick overview of the Crooked Man by Mike Mignola and Richard Corbin on art. Man, this story is short, but you know what? It really packs a punch. Uh, so if you are looking to pick it up, uh, there are these great uh, library editions that Dark Horse Comics keeps in print. They're pretty much evergreen. They're always coming back in print. So if it seems like you can't find them, wait a little bit, especially with the uh, movie coming out and being big. They're probably going to be reprinting that story specifically too. Uh, you can get it in trade paperback. You can get it in this really nice uh, uh, library edition size, which is way bigger than a trade paperback. In fact, here's, here is a trade paperback size just for scale from Dark Horse too. So you can see you are getting a lot larger art going on um, and you're going to really get in there and see those details, those horrific details. But yeah, uh, very cheap actually, because yeah, it's 50 bucks uh, USD MRSP but you can use uh, my code OMNIBUDDY, two bucks off every order. If you go through uh, organic price books, use my code, get two bucks off that book. If you wanna buy th uh, four or more books, so say you wanna pick up the whole series of Hellboy, maybe volumes one through four of the library editions, you can use OMNIBUDDY, ship it together, get 5% off your entire order. Man, those guys ship so well, they communicate really well. Your books are packed safe. They're some of the cheapest, uh, best deals you're going to find out there uh, in comics. Uh, so you're going to be saving a ton of money uh, supporting my channel and all of that. But definitely, definitely pick up The Crooked Man. It's a great read in that you don't have to really know much about what's going on in the canon universe of the Mignola verse. Uh, I mean, it's volume four, so there's obviously been a bunch to it. There's other things happening alongside in tandem with the BPRD books, and there's prequel books with Witchfinder and Baltimore and uh, Frankenstein and all these other sort of hy hyperborea. There's tons of stuff in that universe, and frankly, it is one of the most comprehensive, best universes 
out there in comics, uh, especially when you consider that not all of it is written and drawn by Mike Mignola, but it is uh, just kind of overseen and uh, so tightly like coordinated and choreographed. It is beautiful. And a lot of the artists that are on these books absolutely love the universe and they kind of mimic and or complement uh, Mike Mignola's style in his art. So it's just phenomenal and the stories are told so well. Uh, the library editions, which tell mostly just the Hellboy story itself, are very uh, kind of poetic and mythical and kind of telling legends and they wrap all these old old lore and legends together and kind of retell them in new stories. It is so cool. And then you get into like the BPRD books and all those other books and it becomes like this horrific uh, procedural, almost like cop paranormal show uh, in comics. And man, there are so many of them and you can just read it all the way through. You can grab those trade paperbacks, uh, uh, Dark Horse is really great about keeping the trade paperbacks in print. They keep the library editions in print usually. Uh, the hardcovers are very hard to track down, but a lot of those hardcovers are completely the exact same uh, contents, just in a lot cheaper format as a trade paperback, and those are kept in print usually or are very easy to track down through all the other sources online. So uh, if you are at all interested in Hellboy, make sure to check out those library editions or you can grab the, there's some really great trade paperback omnibus editions, uh, which take you through uh, like all the BPRD and Hellboy stuff in chronological order. Really great ways to read it if you can track it down. Uh, this thing is huge and a little bit out of print, but the monster-sized Hellboy edition is just insanely huge. I mean, it's like, what, 1,400 pages, 1,200 pages, something like that. Uh, and it is, it truly is, yeah, it's 1,500 pages. It's a monster, uh, but it has, a, like, a ton of the stuff in there. It's like all of the library editions or something like that. So you could go that way, but it is enormous and kind of hard to read. Uh, but yeah, so I'll stop blathering on, but definitely, definitely check out the Mignola verse. If you are interested in reading or uh, watching that movie or finding out more about the Crooked Man, definitely read those, uh, that grab that trade paperback or the library edition volume four. Uh, it's got other stories in there afterwards, but you can definitely just jump in and just kind of know that Hellboy is wandering around the continent a little bit and kind of getting into trouble here and there. And that's really all you need to know. You don't need to know too much of the backstory other than that he's out kind of on a walkabout and getting into trouble and doing things and seeing the world. Uh, so very cool story. Uh, Hellboy is one of my absolute favorite universes, the Mignolaverse with BPRD. Great stuff, uh, very accessible, especially if you just pick up like those omnibus editions. Really accessible, really fun, beautiful art really cool story that is just absolutely comprehensive. But that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification, do all of those things. But the most important thing to do is comment. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Hellboy movie is. I know there's been a few different ones, uh, but I th I really like, like I love the Ron Perlman ones. Uh, I, I love uh, the, <laughs> I, I really like them all. They all have like different, uh, really cool takes on Hellboy, in my opinion. Some, you know, different, there's differences and, you know, like some of them get some stuff right. Some of them, in my opinion, get some stuff wrong, but I have a ton of fun with it because a lot of it goes like more fun, more horror, all that kind of stuff. I'm really excited to see what they do with the Crooked Man because it looks like a low budget horror movie and it, I think, is going to be awesome. Anyways, that's it. Take care. Stay cool.